Hey, how's it going? Uh, long time no see. Finally got my webcam kind of set up. Not really, it's still kind of broken. Okay, so um, if you look on the, the left here in my screen, you're gonna see uh, it's the content in Africa. It's got a little bit of animation uh, going on here. This is a bash script, and I'm gonna talk to you about it today. It's called the Elephant in Cairo. I think it's kind of interesting. And then I'm gonna show you a few other little terminal things that I've been playing around with that I also think are kind of interesting. Okay, so if you look carefully at the screen, what you'll see is that there's a path and uh, this little blue fellow follows the path till he hits an E and then stops. Okay, and this elephant in Cairo comes from um, Byte Magazine from the 1980s. And uh, yeah, so I, I found out about this thing, elephant in Cairo. And I just love when I find a programming term that I think is kind of interesting, like what the hell is elephant in Cairo? Uh, it's another name for a sentinel value. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, so if I actually look at the article from uh, Byte Magazine, it has a, an algorithm here. So I'll read you the algorithm and you'll see that it's, pretty much what's happening here. Okay, so you go to Africa, start at the Cape of Good Hope, so you start in the south, right? And work northern uh, northward, okay? And then catch an animal. If you catch an animal, check if it's an elephant. And if it is an elephant, stop, you're done. Okay, you caught an elephant. That's how you catch an elephant. Pretty good algorithm, right? Okay, but what if there is no elephant, right? So I'm gonna look for elephants here and I'm going to hide them. And then I'm gonna rerun this thing. And what's gonna happen now? Well, you never run into an elephant, so you drowned, okay? Uh, you ran right into the Mediterranean. I guess you can only swim so far, and you're dead. Okay, so this is where the experienced computer programmers come in. They modify the algorithm, and what they do is they go and they take an elephant and they put it in Cairo, right? Which is in Egypt, which is right at the top of Africa. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to make sure that even if we don't find an elephant, we're not going to go into the water. So here what I would do is I would comment out this elephant in Cairo, restart this thing and now I've put an elephant right up there in Cairo so no matter what happens I'm gonna hit the elephant in Cairo I'm not gonna go into the water so what they're really talking about here is is like arrays or like blocks of data and they want to tread traverse so far but you don't want to go into an area that's sort of out of bounds right so another name for the elephant in Cairo is a sentinel value which I also think is pretty cool but they have a whole bunch of different names for that so flag value trip value rogue value signal value or dummy data uh, elephant in Cairo is pretty fun but essentially this is like uh, end band communication a way of saying okay stop here but I, I have no external way of telling you to stop so within the code itself i have to tell you to stop i don't know that i really ever had to use sentinel uh values in my programming but an example could be let's say i had a list here and uh accident i actually want to tell the person these these should be treated as two separate groups of numbers right uh so what i can do is i can say well they're all going to be positive but my sentinel value will be negative one so i still have integers in here but as soon as you see negative one okay you know stop there that's my first set okay every negative one is going to be my divider the elephant in cairo animation is just a bash script which i think is kind of fun uh, i have the big map of africa here and then uh, i have some colors i don't use most of them i set up a movement path just saying here are the coordinates and then i have somebody move along there and then if they find an elephant then we're done but i also do some stuff like i trap this again you run this and then if you hit Control c uh it's not going to wreck your terminal I wouldn't really recommend Bash as an animation platform, but it's kind of fun to try and do this stuff in Bash. Uh, and I like the aesthetic. But for anything where the logic's a little bit more complicated, I'm going to use a real programming language. And one that I've been playing around with recently and really liking is Python. Um, I've tried Python in the past and I didn't love it for the way that I had to sort of pull in the dependencies and then ship the dependencies. I found that a bit messy, right? Maybe if you're using a Docker container, it's fine. But for just writing simple scripts on my computer, it's actually pretty nice. And it's fun to have a scripting language that is so um, flexible. So something I wrote just recently is this uh, maze solver in Python. Uh, so it does what it says. It tries to solve a maze. It doesn't do a great job, but eventually it will solve this, right? And uh, what this thing is doing is it's using um, depth first search. Right, so uh, if you've studied data structures and algorithms at all, you'll know that uh, there's breadth first search where you're, you're going wider and wider and wider. And there's depth first search where you go deep and come back, deep and come back. And uh, that's what this is doing here. The maze itself is just ASCII characters, right? I'm just printing the screen like I always do uh, using, you know, uh, ANSI escape sequences. I actually have this other maze too, but it, it's pretty terrible. I didn't, I didn't really spend time on that maze. I slowed this thing down now, so it's uh, one second per iteration. Uh, but yeah, it's a recursive function. So um, we essentially we start searching, we draw the maze, and if you hit a wall, okay, then we stop. Or if you go somewhere you've already been, then we stop. And if not, then we kind of look around, maybe up, left, down, right. I actually do that uh, randomly, right? So we're gonna look either up or down, 
you know, different direction. So we'll solve it differently each time. And then uh, if we find a new spot, okay, keep going. And then we'll keep doing our depth for search. And then drawing again is just, you know, clear the screen, move it to the top, print out the map and then sleep. That's it. That's how we render. And if I want, I could change this uh, so it's extremely fast. So it's going to be hundredth of a second uh, and we can run it like that. And uh, it's still not fast enough. I think I want it a little bit faster than that. But there we go. Let's try that out. Okay, there we go. So that's really, it uh, looks a little jank. Okay, I'm happy with this speed. I think it, this looks kind of cool. So now we can do a, a while loop. So while true, spell the whole thing right. So while true, uh, do, and then uh, Python, uh, what's it? Maze solver.py, and then let's sleep for, you know, a little bit, and then we'll say done. And this thing's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna go on forever now. We can just watch mazes and mazes and mazes. You do this while you're on a Zoom call at work and you're a little bit bored and you just watch mazes all day, um, you know. Maybe, maybe don't do that. I can't help but watch this and think I should be generating the maze too, but I am not. Okay, last thing here. I've got uh, this quicksort algorithm that I wrote in Python. Uh, again, Python, having a fun time. So um, if you don't know quicksort, it is a way of sorting things. Uh, and it's an algorithm and it's faster than bubble sort generally. Um, yeah, almost always. So, um, but I ran into an issue while I was doing this. So, okay, let's find my quicksort here. Okay, so so I wrote quicksort, you know, which is, I mean, to be honest, it took me a while, uh, but I figured it out, right? But then the, the real trouble I had is I want an array of random numbers, and how can I get that in Vim? Uh, it turns out I'm terrible at making random numbers. Like if I try and put in a number, like even here, I put the same number twice. So what I'm trying to do is I want to find a way of putting in random numbers in Vim, right? And uh, yeah, so it turns out it's actually not harder to do at all. So let's uh, change this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, open up the, oh, I don't know the word for this, command palette. It's definitely not command palette. Anyway, the command area down here. And uh, I'm going to read. So what am I going to read? I want to read something from the shell. And what am I going to read from the shell? I'm going to read echo uh, and then random. Okay, so um, what this is going to do is most operating systems, uh, no, that's not true. Most Unix systems have a random variable which you can... Uh, use at any point, it's gonna give you a random number within a certain range. And uh, there we go, so I have my random number. Now, that's pretty good, but what I really wanna do is I wanna do that with a comma at the end because I'm putting this into an array. And actually, this isn't an array, it's a list. Uh, doesn't matter, okay. Okay, but so I've, I've just given myself a single number, that is not enough. What I really need is I need another number, right? So what you can do is you can either push up and run that command again, or I can do at symbol and then uh, colon at symbol and colon that's pretty good but what i can also do is 100 at symbol colon and boom look there's all my numbers so now i've got so many random numbers uh not so, and uh it's actually very slow there's probably a much better way of generating random numbers and let's get rid of that and now i can jump out of here and uh run it and there hopefully that's sorted don't look too carefully i might have messed up the algorithm um Anyway, I think that's also fun. And now if I actually really wanted to, I could sort those numbers in Vim as well. So what I would do is I would select inside that block and then I would jump back to the command and do sort and I want to sort it numerically. And there we go. Or I can sort it in the opposite direction. So GV, I'm going to get that selection again, sort 